Hello and welcome to the seventh lesson in this video series on how we can create a TK Enter GUI to control our Arduino. In this video, we're going to use some new functionality with a lambda function. This function will allow us to pass the delay selected by the user in a settings menu and enable us to update this value. We'll see why in a moment we have to use this special anonymous lambda function as opposed to how we were implementing commands of those menu widgets previously. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Python code. For this set of functionality, we need to create a submenu within our settings menu. We're creating a new option called delay. So if you notice, we follow a similar pattern to keep putting these containers within themselves for this menu bar. So settings is within menu bar, and this delay submenu is going to be within the settings menu. So to add this new option of delay, we do delay submenu equals menu, pass it settings, and tear off equals zero. Then, to enable us to add the options to this settings menu, we need to add the cascade. And that's done by settings.addCascade, label delay, and menu equals delay submenu. This for loop following that is going to iterate through the blink time list and populate the labels. So this way the user has the same delay selections as they do from the drop down inside the GUI as they do from the settings menu. In order to do this, if you notice above we did settings.add command for blink, turn on, and turn off. Well, we need to do the same thing and these delay values are already strings. So we simply iterate through them to create the labels. So that's the first half of the submenu.add command function there. Then we move on to the more interesting part, which is how we use the command and lambda function together in order to determine which value the user selected in that settings menu. Using this lambda expression seems very odd, whether you're familiar with them or not, it still takes a little bit of thinking and walking through to understand it. So we'll walk through some examples to get a better understanding of how we're using Lambda here. Let's consider first why Lambda here is an appropriate option. If we were to do simply command equals menu delay select I without the Lambda expression, that function would be called upon this widget creation. And that's not what we want. We don't want to call it upon the creation of it. We want to call it when the user selects it. Let's go ahead and take a look at some examples that will clarify what we're up to here. Let's compare the lambda function to a normal function definition to get a better understanding of it. Lambda is defined on the left by lambda, a, which is the argument, a colon, and then a plus one. So what this function does is returns the argument plus one. On the left side of the colon, we have the argument. And on the right side, we have the body, which is how we tell the lambda what we want it to do. Now let's look at the function definition on the right. We go def, def, add one, which is the name of that function. And then we define its argument there, y. And then we have the colon, and within that expression, we have the return y plus 1, which is considered the body. So these two things do exactly the same thing. They take in an argument and they add 1. But notice that the lambda function does not have a name, and that's why we call it being anonymous. And also, we don't need that return statement. The lambda function is also one line, which is a restriction of it. So in practice, you can note that the lambda function can do pretty simple one-line things, whereas our function definitions will have a name and can have a larger amount of complexity to them. Here's a look at that lambda function in action. I assigned it to add one lambda. I first printed it without parentheses, and you see that result. It says it's a function lambda at the memory location. Then I printed it when we pass it the argument, which is how you would typically use it, and that's add one lambda with two. So two plus one is three, and that's the result we get. 
Now let's take a look at an example where I'm actually assigning the argument in the lambda definition. So this is a really basic loop that adds 3 to the index of a loop. I have a variable add 3 and I assigned it to lambda x equals 3 colon x plus t where t is the iterator of the loop. So as you would expect we first get 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 as a result. The key takeaway here is that you can assign your argument in that lambda expression. We'll look at one final example that will help us understand what we're actually doing in the above line in the delay submenu add command. This example was created to mimic the command we're going to be using in our tkinter GUI. So we're going to have a lambda function that's going to reference a normal function. In this example, I'm simply creating a list that consists of a number times 10. In this case, I just created a for loop and then multiplied the index times 10. That function is created up top times 10 with the argument n and then it returns n times 10. Then I create the list that we're going to be storing the values into. Now let's get into the for loop which contains the lambda expression. I first assign lambda times 10 to lambda i equals i and then the body of that lambda expression times 10 and then with the argument i. So as we discussed before, I'm using an assignment argument, i equals i, to get us the current index value. And then in the body of the lambda function, I have 10 times with i as the argument. Then I append this variable which contains the lambda expression in it to the times 10 list. And for educational purposes, I then print out lambda times 10, which is that value we just appended to the list. Let's take a moment to look at the result of that first print statement. We see function lambda at the memory location. Notice that these are all at distinct, unique memory locations. They will all be a unique lambda expression evaluated at the index that's assigned to it. Let's take a look at the second loop in this example. It simply prints out the items within this list in this case are lambda expressions that got assigned the index value in the loop above it. I have times 10 list and within the brackets I have w which is simply the index of the loop so that's going to print out the list at the current index and then I have empty brackets. Now this is the key takeaway of this example. I'm not passing it anything to get these unique values which are printed to the right. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. The argument was assigned when we created the lambda times 10 variable by doing i equals i. This example mimics what we're doing in this tkinter GUI add command menu option. Now that we have a better understanding of lambda here, let's take a look at menu delay select. So the high level summary of the lambda expression is just going to pass the particular index value to the menu delay select function. That's how we're going to keep track of what the user actually selected. So when the user selects the option from the drop down, for example, if they selected 50, then index would be 0. If they selected 100, it would be 1 and so on. So that's the argument going into menu delay select. Then we hit the if statement. If blink state dot get equals zero, then we want to set the blink state checkbox. I chose for this set of functionality to not cause it to go into blink mode. If the user selects delay and then the value from the submenu, then it simply updates the blink milliseconds display there. It doesn't actually cause it to go into blink mode, and that's just a personal choice. And that's one thing that you can think about when you're making these kind of GUIs is what exact functionality do you want to specify. So here this menu delay selects simply updates the selected value from the existing embedded blink milliseconds option there. So that's what the last line of this function definition does. User delay which is that string variable which we've always used and that's displayed in the GUI set 
and then blink time at the index. So after the user selects the value from the submenu, the blink time will be updated in the GUI, and then the user would have to hit turn on to engage the Arduino to put the LED into blink mode. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned more about how you can upgrade your TK Enter GUI. Stay tuned for more content and let me know what you think in the comment section.